Hi, in today's video we're going to be looking at the Xtool D7W. So this is a 7 inch diagnostic tool, that's what the 7 means in the model number, and this is the latest version of the D7 released in 2024. So we've got an Android tablet here, uh, 7 inch as I said display, a 5 amp hour battery which should keep you going for pretty much most of the day, and it's got 64 gigabytes of flash on here. Now I think this one only has uh, two gigabytes of RAM on here, so a little bit low on that, but it's an Android 10 tablet and it has um, general Android functionality, so there is a browser and you can install some apps on there as well. But the thing that you'd be buying this for is the Xtool Diagnostic app, which is booting up now. Now, in terms of connection to your vehicle, we've got this wireless dongle here. Now, some of the other tools that we've looked at in the past, they use Bluetooth to communicate between the dongle that plugs into the diagnostic port and the tool. This one actually has a Wi-Fi connection using the Diagnostic over IP protocol, which means that you can get significantly faster data rates between the two. Now we'll see what that translates into when we're looking at some live data. I'm not sure how much of that is restricted by the CAN protocol on the vehicle or whether we'll actually be able to see data updated significantly quicker on this tablet. So some of the headlines from the website are that it uses Wi-Fi rather than Bluetooth for a more stable connection between the dongle and the tablet. We can also do key programming and coding of the engine management unit. And now I think for the key programming, you do need an additional dongle, which allows you to wirelessly communicate with the key fob. And the Xtool KC100 looks to be the tool that you need to work with the tablet for key programming. In addition to being able to read codes and live data, we've also got 36 service functions on this tablet and we'll look at those in a little bit more detail in a moment. And in terms of the diagnostics, we're able to communicate with every module in the vehicle, look at the codes associated with each of those modules. We can read and graph live data from each of those modules and also, depending on the vehicle's capabilities, we're able to perform full bi-directional control of the apparatus connected to each of those modules. In terms of other functionality, we're able to effectively remote desktop into the tablet. So if you do need some assistance from someone who's not on site, they can remote desktop into the tablet and perform diagnostic functions. You are able to create reports for your customer. So when you start a diagnostic session, it logs everything that's happened and then you're able to create a PDF report at the end, which you can send to them. You can obviously view and export the live data as well as graph it in real time on the screen. We've got 21 languages and there are a variety of different tools that can connect to the D7W to enhance its functionality, such as the one that's listed here is the XV100, which is a camera module which you can plug in and use the screen on the tablet to see what the camera is looking at. When you first turn on the device, you are required to register it and set up an account. And at that point, that activates the three years of free updates. After the three year update period is over, there's basically two options. You can use it without a license, but the difference here is that this tool will work in full after the three years. It just means you don't get any new updates or you can pay the yearly fee, which is about £90 at the moment for the full functionality. So this one's really quite competitive in the pricing for the updates compared to some of the other models. Now, in terms of what you get inside the box, where you get a hard case to keep this in, you get the Wi-Fi diagnostic port dongle, you get an AC adapter, and unfortunately this one can't charge via USB, so you do need to make sure that you look after this adapter. It has a little 12 volt, um, 2.5 millimeter uh, barrel jack on there. You get a couple of mains cables, depending on where you're from, and that's about it really. And then we'll take a little look at the tablet itself. So we've got the seven inch screen on the front, on the top, you've got the power button and the charging port, and there is a USB 3 port just here, which is for some of the accessories that you can use this device with. And I think you can store stuff uh, on a USB stick as well, although it does have internal storage. On the back here, we've got a tilting bail, which you can use to keep it in position um, elsewhere on the vehicle if you don't want to hold it. And there is also a basic camera with a flash and a speaker, but that's about it really. It feels fairly rugged, uh, but it is fairly simple. Uh, the camera is fairly basic, so you'd be able to take some uh, pictures with it and some video, but it's not up to the quality of a modern mobile phone. 
Now the website didn't go into detail about the various functions that are available on the system so let's click on here and this will list them all out. So we've got things like key programming which you need the additional dongle for but then we've got the typical resets that we see on here things like calibration of the seats, tyre pressure monitoring system reset, uh, we've got things like resetting the battery management system if you change the battery, uh, transport mode, so some vehicles require to be put in a certain mode if you're going to tow them or if you're going to lift them. Uh, we've got some other things along here like um, things to do with hybrid vehicles where you need to do some work on the HV battery. Uh, oil reset light, steering angle sensor reset, EGR relearn and some things to do with the water pump and injector coding. So all of the typical stuff here, we've got the DPF resets as well. And if we click on any of these, it takes us into a sub menu where you pick the particular vehicle that you're working on. Um, so for example, we're going to look in Europe and then we can click on Ford. It probably needs me to connect the dongle at this point. So let's go in the vehicle and have a look specifically at the functionality on the tool. Right, so we've got the dongle plugged in. Let's see how quick it is to connect to the vehicle. So we'll click on Diagnostic. Uh, we'll click on Europe here and then go down to Ford EU and then we'll do automatic detection. And automatic scan. And it will go through and talk to each of the modules. So what I'm noticing is it's actually really quick to scan the modules except for the modules that it doesn't see a response from. So for example, uh, this will go through and check for every module that could be fitted to the vehicle. But if you don't have that option because you didn't pick it when you ordered the vehicle from new, it waits to see if it times out either because it's not responding or just because it's not fitted. And that's the bit that seems to take a little bit longer. It waits quite a few seconds before it decides that there's no module connected. But it looks like it's finished and we've got a few fault codes and we've got two fault codes on the PCM again, so it looks like that fan circuit, yeah, which we saw in the other review video, I am going to have to investigate that. But we can click on DTC report here, and that will list all of the fault codes. So most of them are just to do with the fact that I've got some LEDs fitted, but I'm going to have to hunt down this um, damaged wire going to the radiator fan at some point in the future. If we go back, uh, we can go to the PCM and click diagnose and it will go into the menu specifically for the engine management unit. So we can click on read trouble codes and that will just read the codes directly. And it says obviously fan control circuit low, which suggests that line is probably shorted to the chassis. Uh, although it is occasionally shorted to the chassis because I can tell that the fan is working appropriately at certain times. And we can go through and if we wanted to, we can clear the trouble codes. And this trouble code did go away for a while, so it's not a continuous fault. And so that's the process for clearing codes. Very straightforward, just click tr clear trouble codes. And then we've got similar things to what we'd expect on this type of tool. So we've got live data. Now, one thing that they mentioned in the specifications is that this dongle should be able to communicate significantly faster with the tool. So let's have a look at that. Uh, let's go through to something that might change. Um, so we've got the EGR position, let's have a look at that one. And we'll press custom here. And we can see the data values changing probably a couple of times a second there. Let's have a look at another value. This looks fairly similar to the speed that we were doing things before. Oh yeah, and if we look at the fuel rail pressure, you can see that is updating probably about five or six times a second. That's significantly faster than we normally see from these tools. If I give the engine a little rev, we should see that blip up. So yeah, that is definitely a significant improvement. And we can click on graph at the bottom here, and that will plot the fuel rail pressure on one graph. Let's add a few more items to the screen. So we go back and pick a few other items. I'm just picking random ones here. Click on custom. And we've got six items there. Click on graph. And you can see those updating really quite quickly as well. And we can combine them. And that plots them all on a single graph. And yeah, that is definitely significantly quicker than we normally see 
with the Bluetooth dongle. That's live data and as I said before this can talk to every module in the vehicle so for example if you look at the body control module we can look at the live data that's available there and we can see what triggered the last alarm we can see the position of the accelerator pedal so if we press that that goes up and down auto lock turned off we looked at that in the previous review video uh, we've got things like um, well it says current of the vehicle battery I'm not sure what that says but the battery was placed three, 631 days ago uh, which we did in a video actually a while back state of the vehicle battery so it's saying it's 73 percent charged so these are all things that the body control module is calculating it's not done by this tool specifically but yeah we can do um, live data on any module in the car and then we've got the actuation tests. So these are the bi-directional tests of the vehicle. So we click on actuation test. And as before, these are specific for the vehicle that you're communicating with. So not every vehicle will have the same list of things in the actuation tests. And some vehicles have significantly more tests available. Uh, in particular, the other car we've got, one of the BMWs, that one has so many actuation tests, you can pretty much trigger any module in the vehicle or read the status of any uh, module in the vehicle. And so on this particular body control module, there's not too many bi-directional controls on this particular module, but for example, we've got here, we can change the options for whether we blink the external indicators when we lock the vehicle. I think when we looked last time, the instrument panel cluster had more options in terms of bi-directional controls. So let's go into there. So yeah, here we've got the instrument panel cluster and we can turn on some of the lights. So indicator of the high beam, we can turn that on and that will illuminate the blue LED there on the top of the dial. We can go back, we can turn on the frost warning for example to red and you can see that illuminating at the bottom. A warning indicator, the little eye. Rear fog light. So yeah, as you can see, we've got a variety of different tests that we can do on the instrument panel cluster. And then we've got some service functions. And for example, on this particular vehicle, we can update the odometer on the instrument panel cluster. Obviously that odometer value is stored on various modules. So uh, this is really only if you've replaced the instrument panel cluster and you need to update what it says on there. And it's pretty much the same story for all of the modules in the vehicle. So we can look at the headlight control module. And we've got things like live data here. Let's see what this says. Uh, so we've got the height of the sensors that are detecting the height of the vehicle. So we can adjust the beam level, uh, the corner lights and the supply voltage. And then we've got special functions, which is probably the headlight alignment, which is automatic on this vehicle. You can adjust it up and down. So that's the general diagnostics on here. And we can go back. When you connect the dongle to a vehicle, you don't necessarily have to do a full scan of all the modules. If you know you just want to look at something to do with the engine management unit or something else, you can go into system selection and you can pick the module directly. So for example, we can go to the PCM here and it'll immediately go into the menu for the PCM without having to scan every module. That's the same menu that we had up before. And again, if we wanted to go into the instrument panel cluster, we don't have to wait for a full scan. We can just go straight into here and then click on the various options, which is a lot quicker if we're not interested in just an overall health check of the vehicle. Uh, and then we've got things like service. So these are the service functions. Uh, as I mentioned, this one had over 30 service functions. These are the ones that are applicable to this particular vehicle. So if we click on powertrain, for example, these are the things that we can do with this vehicle. We can reset the oil light. Now on this vehicle, actually, this is just an instruction for how to do it uh, because it doesn't allow that to be done over the OBD port. Uh, but we've got some information here about some of the other resets that we can do, like we can prime the fuel system. We can reset various things to do with the DPF and the EGR and the fuel uh, trims. Uh, sorry, the, um, the fuel correction values on the injectors. So again, it just lists out the ones that are applicable to your particular vehicle uh, because when you go back to the main screen, 
when you click on special function here, you might be looking at a whole load of options here that aren't even applicable to your particular car. Now when you've completed your diagnostic session, you can then click on report and create a report which you can either log for your files or send to the customer. So we can click on this and then it will show you the trouble codes that you saw in your session. So for example, now I've got a record of the details of the fan errors that I've got. Then also the live data that we saw at that time. So we've got all of the various bits of live data that we looked at and then the remaining trouble codes for the other modules, as you can see along here. And then you can either share that by email or you can print it directly if you've got a Wi-Fi printer. Now, you can also uh, record live data. So when we were doing the live data earlier, I actually recorded one of those. So we click on data playback. And so if you were seeing a specific issue and pressed record at the right time, you might be able to capture an event and then review it afterwards, uh, which is really handy. So you can click on these and you can see it's changing in real time. And we can still um, combine these onto a graph, for example, after the event, which is really handy. So imagine you've got a really complex problem and it only happens every so often and then you missed it. If you recorded it, you could then look at it or even get someone else to look at it or share it with the community so that we can you know, try and diagnose the problem. So this is a really nice feature of being able to record live data. Then if we go to the update section, we've got a little number here, it says 12 updates pending. So if we click on that, you can see what those updates are. And if you click on one of the updates, it gives a change log here, which is really handy. So you can see whether you want to update to it, especially if it's a vehicle that you might not be working on, you may not want to add that to your update list. Uh, but you can just go ahead and update all of those. And as I said, the license for this is three years from when you activate it. And then you can still use the tool in full after that point. So that's the Xtool D7W. And it's a really nice diagnostic tool, probably more responsive than some of the other tools that we've looked at previously. And certainly the data rates from the dongle seem to be a lot faster as well, which seems to help things as well. I also do really like the fact that we're not restricted by the license. So we've already got a very generous three years of updates with the tool, but the fact that you can still use it in full after that time is quite an improvement from some of the other devices. Now this one's the D7W, which has the wireless dongle. There is a very slightly cheaper version, which is called the D7S, and that has a cabled connection from the top of the unit. So I'll put a link to both of those items in the description down below, as well as a link to the manufacturer website where it has a lot of detail about the specific functionality that's available for the vehicle that you're thinking of connecting it to. So anyway, I hope this video is useful to some of you. And if you've got any thoughts or comments, don't forget to leave them in the comments section down below. And until next time, thanks for watching.